I'm very honored to be leading today's anniversary event. Richard Hughes is someone who deserves to be commemorated and celebrated. He was an extraordinary man and a very accomplished engineer and designer. noting that he was a proud Welshman. It is appropriate that our first poem today will celebrate and record that aspect of his life. His reputation as a designer and engineer was cemented at the Festival of Britain in 1951, when his water sculptures were exhibited to the nation for the first time, and he was rightly acclaimed for his talent and ingenuity. Sadly, none of them outlived the festival. And today, 40 years after his death, we stand beside the last remaining example of his work and know that he would have been so pleased that it is now declared a national monument, grade two listed. We're now going to listen to two poems um, which have been chosen specially for today. They're all Welsh poems translated into English. And the first one which I'm going to read is called Reservoirs by R.S. Thomas. And that's going to be followed by Water, which is a poem by Philip Larkin, which will be read by Errol Dooling. Reservoirs. There are places in Wales I don't go reservoirs that are the subconscious of a people troubled far down with gravestones, chapels, villages even. The serenity of their expression revolts me. It is a pose for strangers, a watercolour's appeal to the mass instead of the poem's harsher conditions. There are the hills too, gardens gone under the scum of the forests, and the smashed faces of the farms with the stone trickle of their tears down the hill's side. Where can I go then from the smell of decay, from the putrefying of a dead nation? I have walked the shore for an hour and seen the English scavenging among the remains of our culture, covering the sand like the tide and with the roughness of the tide elbowing our language into the grave that we have dug for it. Water by Philip Larkin. If I were called to construct a religion, I should make use of water. Going to church would entail affording to dry different clothes. My litany would employ images of sousing a furious, devout drench. And I should raise in the east a glass of water where any angled light would congregate endlessly. We're now going to have a, an intervention by Dr. Robert MacDonald, who was a student of Richard Hughes's in the Liverpool School of Architecture in 1970 and we'll now say a few words about him. It is really a great honour to share my reminiscences of Richard Hughes and Liverpool. In 1970, I started at the Liverpool University School of Architecture in Abercrombie Square, and our city has always had strong Welsh 
connections. And Liverpool was often described as the capital of North Wales. Our drinking water, and possibly even Richard's fountain water, comes controversially from Lake Vernwy. Uniquely, Richard Hughes was the resident engineer at the Liverpool School of Architecture. Not many schools of architecture have ever had an engineer in, in their staff, and Richard was very important. More often, I might have met Richard in one of the school corridors. He was always explaining and demonstrating his special kinetic engineering and dy dynamic structures. Professor Robert Gardner Medwin carefully balanced a diverse number of tutors and making space for Richard and his, his amazing design creativity. And at that time, the Liverpool School had important Polish connections uh, after the war, and they brought with them dynamic constructivism and modernism. And I think this is a, an amazing example of that fusion of two kinds of engineering. And I think also importantly, Richard brought his practical experiences of Camelard Shipyard. So if you look at Camelard Shipyard and you look at this, there's amazing connections. So Richard's fountain is clearly a special and unique example of 20th century architectural engineering in a special space. It's not just the structure, it's the space that is, is vitally important to, to look after. Look after. We, it deserves our design respect, its historic listing, and its protection. And maybe his creative fountain in water and steel is as poetic as Dylan Thomas's On the Milkwood. O oh, Mona, land of song, O oh, mother of Wales, how long from thy dear shores an exile I have been. Still from thy lonely plains ascend the old sweet strains. And at the mine, or plough, or humble home, the dreaming peasant hears divine music come. The Menai ebbs and flows, and the song tide wanes and goes, and the singers and the harp players are dumb. The eternal mountains rise like cloud upon the skies.